It began in a small Minnesota town in April 1923. It was here that Owen Hallberg, the second of three children and the only son of Nels and Lillian Hallberg, was born. Owen had his first experience with cooperatives when he was just a child. His father was a charter director of North Star Electric Cooperative, and Owen would go with him to sell shares in the co-op. Not surprisingly, Owen was quite the entrepreneur as a child. At age 10, he got his cream tester's license, and at age 15, with Dad's help, he operated a 24-hour gasoline service. Despite all of these time-consuming activities, Owen was still valedictorian of his high school class. In 1942, Owen went to the University of Minnesota College of Agriculture. He worked his way through college, was active in many campus activities, and graduated with high distinction. He even earned the highest awards from the university, the Dean Freeman Leadership and the Caleb Dorr Scholarship Awards. But his highest reward from the college days was meeting Geraldine Rylander during his freshman year. The two were married in December 1947, a marriage which blossomed into a 51-year partnership blessed by three children. After graduation and earning his master's degree, Owen joined the cooperative GLF Exchange in Indiana, his first cooperative job. He left there after seven years to join the St. Paul Bank for Cooperatives. At St. Paul, he developed a monthly newsletter for directors and managers of cooperatives in a four-state area. It was a first for the farm credit system and was soon replicated by other districts. This was also a start for what turned out to be an outstanding record of cooperative communications. In 1959, Owen left the St. Paul Bank to become general manager for the Dairy Maid Products Cooperative. During his six-year tenure with Dairy Maid, the revenues tripled. When Land O'Lakes acquired Dairy Maid, Owen was named Director of Education for Land O'Lakes and later Director of Public Relations. Here, he continued educating people about cooperatives by conducting management schools and employee education seminars. He even started a young farmer program to involve the youth in his educational efforts. During this time, Owen was in great demand as a keynote speaker, and the message of his talks was always clear. Use the co-op to effectively market the products of the farm and keep good communication between the cooperative and its member patrons. But the big job of spreading the word about cooperatives came when Owen was named president of the American Institute of Cooperation. This was a precarious time for AIC. Membership was down and finances were poor. But Owen took this as a challenge and an opportunity. He decided that the best solution for AIC's woes was to hit the road. Immediately, he began holding meetings with key cooperative leaders to get their support for AIC. He worked tirelessly and traveled constantly to spread the word of cooperation and the need for cooperative education and training and he met with great success. Through his efforts, AIC's revenues doubled and membership increased by 30%. In addition, the annual National Institute of Cooperative Education grew in attendance, impact, and creativity, helping to educate thousands of current and future cooperators. Owen was actively involved with a number of organizations in addition to his own. He gave his time to the Wisconsin Council of Agricultural Cooperatives, the Minnesota Association of Cooperatives, the National Creameries Association, the National Dairy Council, and the Cooperative Editorial Association. He served twice as chairman of the National Co-op Month Planning Committee and was involved with the Graduate Institute of Cooperative Leadership, the American Farm Film Foundation, ACDI, and VOCA. Because he focused much of his energy into educating youth and getting them involved with cooperatives, he was named an honorary American farmer at the Future Farmers of America's 1976 convention. This is just one in a long list of honors. There were two themes to Owen's professional career, cooperation and communication, and he worked painstakingly to make sure that cooperation was communicated wherever and whenever possible. During his four-decade career, Owen made more than 2,500 presentations about co-ops. He elected to retire in 1985 at the age of 62, and he and Jerry returned to their lakefront home in Minnesota. 
In his retirement, he found time to appreciate the finer things in life, like teaching his granddaughter how to fish. But he still continued to promote cooperatives and community, appearing as a guest speaker at a number of events. Sadly, Owen passed away just a few days before his election to the Cooperative Hall of Fame was announced. Owen Hallberg was a tremendous visionary, educator, and communicator who was highly valued by the cooperative community. We are sad to have lost such a dynamic leader, but are comforted that his legacy of cooperation and communication will certainly remain with us. Tonight, we thank him for all that he has done and honor him with induction into the Cooperative Hall of Fame.